what's crazy? We are about one year. This is like the one year anniversary from when we started FanCraft. And oh my goodness, there have been so many things, so many incredible builds done on this realm. And I'm just so pleased. What's up, everybody? It's Bo here. That's right. We are back on FanCraft. And I am just thrilled here at the one year anniversary with all of the amazing things that we've been able to see pop up around Earth 4 and also contribute to. And today, I think that we need to start off by showcasing a big collaboration that we've been working on behind the scenes with Showchasm. So as you may recall, a couple of weeks back, we started working on the Pokemon Gym, which, I mean, just spoilers, it's it's done, okay? I've been trying to think of a couple different ways that I could like set this up without just spoiling the finished product, but there's no way. I mean, the Pokemon Gym is massive, and it's right here smack dab in the Nintendo District looking fantastic. What I love about this build is that it was a true collaboration. Not only did Socasm lay out the palette and really build up the structure, the gym itself, if you will, on the exterior, but because of a very common oversight in the build, there was a little bit of some brain breakage that happened with this one. Because as you can see, it's a one block center build, but when she originally built the structure above, she built a two block center structure. And this was absolutely like destroying our brain. It was like doing crazy things to us. And so we decided to tag team it a little bit. I came up behind her, made some adjustments to the overall layout, kind of pushed in the side a little bit, as well as add all these little Pokeball and Pokemon little uh, iconography all around the build. And I think it really turned out great. And then of course I also did the interior and I gotta tell you, not only did I do, you know, the cool little, little stands that you see behind me, you know, like you would find in your common Pokemon gym, but oh man, no Pokemon gym is complete without a full on Pokemon battle. That's right. We've actually got some Pokemon going right here in the middle of the gym and I'm super stoked for this. We got ourselves, what is this, a Venusaur right here or an Ivasaur? I always get those two mixed up. I was I was always blue, y'all. I was never I was never red or green. I was a Squirtle to Blastoise guy. But anyway, yes, we've got the Ivasaur right here going to battle head to head against a pretty epic looking Charizard if I do say so myself. Now I got to give a major shout out to a fellow Minecraft YouTuber Lombi who came up with these different Pokémon designs. I'm going to actually link directly to their video in the description for this one. Now I did make a couple of adjustments to their baseline designs. For example, I adjusted the tail of the Charizard so I could actually light it on fire. And I also kind of extended out the flower of our Venusaur right here. And I think they look really, really great. But honestly, I could not have done this without the amazing inspiration uh, from Lombi. So definitely check out their video. Again, link is gonna be in the description. But as I say, Squirtle was my first, he was my main. And so therefore I needed to kind of, you know, add the missing one. I mean, Lombi did a great job with both the Venusaur and the Charizard, but there was no Blastoise until now. That's right, we got ourselves a Blastoise. I had some fun working on this design. I was very inspired by the incredible work Lombi had done, but I, I really felt like we needed a Blastoise in the mix. And with the mud blocks and the bamboo in particular, I think we really got quite the palette to make ourselves a pretty epic looking Blastoise right here. So very proud of how this turned out. And uh, you know, I, 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 got, I got my guy here, I got my Blastoise. You know, you gotta, you gotta have it in the mix if you're gonna do the big three. But there's some other Pokemon that kind of might pop up here and there. You might've just seen one. And uh, as we continue to build out this area of the Nintendo district, I'm just absolutely thrilled. Now I've actually thought about possibly adding a couple of like effects here and there, like possibly, like what if we did kind of some white and yellow glass and glass panes kind of coming down and being soaked up into the flower, almost like the Venusaur is charging up for a solar beam. And then of course, possibly doing something similar with like a fire blast or maybe dragon breath or something like that coming straight for our Venusaur from the Charizard. I don't know. Actually, I kind of feel like since the, the fire effect of the tail really goes a long way to giving this a sense of life, it's really more the Venusaur that, that needs a little something. So maybe something like that, where it's almost kind of coming out from over there and kind of winding down and going down here, or maybe even, I don't know. I, I've, I'm, I've got to think through this and see if there might be something there. That might be something we add on the back end. Now, one thing that Lombi did do with their build is, is they also gave these guys eyes and unfortunately, since we were playing on Bedrock, I don't, I don't know how to do the whole invisible item frame trick. So that's not a possibility for me. So, you know, we just were imagining there are eyes on either side. Really, I mean, it's Minecraft, right? It's really more the idea of a thing 
than it is anything else. But man, I just, I can't not look at how great this looks. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Enough of that. Oh yeah. And the interior in general, as you can see, turned out pretty well. I really didn't do much other than give kind of a nice little bold line around the seating area. I thought about hanging down some sort of scoreboard from the center, but after I put in these kind of pokeballs up here, I really didn't want to obscure that too much. So I kind of left it as is. Here's kind of the area where you can get your Pokemon healed. Here's kind of the area where you can buy some potions and whatnot before the battle. And yeah, all things considered, the interior is a little basic, but that's why we got these guys to really, you know, add some life and make something, I think, I think pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. Now that that is done, we've got to showcase the next new build here on FanCraft. Now, I had every intention of actually showcasing this kind of throughout the process, but unfortunately, I ran into some audio issues when I was recording the first time around. Now, as you may recall, here at the top of Mount Olympus, all the crafters came together to decide which gods we would be building temples to along the side of the mountain, and I got Dionysus. Now, Dionysus is the god of, uh, you know, mischief to some extent, but mostly wine, theater, performance, all kinds of great things. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to give Dionysus a little bit of a vineyard vibe, kind of almost like a micro vineyard, if you will. So that's what we got right here. We've got, you know, these grape vines hanging down. We've got kind of some grapes growing up from the ground. We've got a whole vat of wine that one could bathe in if they wanted to, as well as an actual little you know, stream right here to get yourself some fresh water. Got a little bit of a cellar kind of carved into the side here. I'm not gonna lie, this was a little bit more basic than what I initially had in mind, but once I started building it, I kinda, I didn't know what to do with it, honestly. So I just kinda kept it a little bit more simple. I did mark it, so you know, welcome to the ever-flowing Temple of Dionysus, God of Fermentation, Festivities, and Theater. I was gonna put wine, but Minecraft wouldn't allow me to put wine, so we went with Fermentation. Also have a little like vine overgrowth on the side as well. And it's a smaller temple, I would think, than maybe some of the others that I might end up building because Dionysus is a bit, you know, I mean, whilst one of the gods of Olympus, definitely one of the lesser gods. And so this one's right at the tree line. It's not nearly as kind of in a larger place of prominence and a little bit smaller, a little bit more subdued, but nonetheless, very, very fun. But since that's done, it does beg the question, what do I do now? We've got some other gods available, right? We've got Aphrodite, Hera, we've got Athena, and Hermes, right? So rather than just kind of picking one, I think we should let fate decide. We need some kind of like god box, if you will. Like this was kind of our, our device that we used to choose who had first preference as it related to, you know, the various gods they wanted to build. But I'm thinking from this point on, it needs to be a little bit more out of our control. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do this as kind of like a big central decision making creation of sorts. Oh, 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 no, 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 oh, oh, no, 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 no. Woo! Ho, ho, ho! Yikes! Okay, and I feel as though you need to, like, maybe stand on something, and, like, maybe the god will fall from the heavens. That would make some sense, right? So let's see. Kind of making this up as I go along. I mean, I just, I'm figuring we just go with a lot of quartz, and, uh... I'm also kind of wondering, should we have like fire on top? Like this is almost like a torch. That would be kind of cool. Okay, I think that that's pretty good. That that looks like kind of an altar to the to the gods of sorts. Okay, I like this. You know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of wishing I had built something like this for when we uh, when we actually did the live stream and and got assigned our gods. But okay, so this is great. This is good. Now I just have to put the remaining deities into the machine. All right, okay, it works. All right, that is to say it, it, it like functionally works, but it also works visually, I think. Yeah, I mean, this will probably end up getting covered up <laughs> eventually one way or the other, but oh man, you know what? Could have used it then, got it now, happy to have it. I think that's a good, that's a good way to look at it. So let's find out who we shall be uh, deemed worthy of creating veneration to next, shall we? All right, here we go. And Athena. Oh, 
Okay, goddess of wisdom, right? Because Artemis is the hunt. So Athena is wisdom, but not only that, thanks to the Acropolis, we actually have a real life temple of Athena we could use as a bit of a basis. And while she is technically a daughter of Zeus, I've always kind of technically seen her as one of the most influential of all the Olympians, not just because of wisdom, but because of kind of her origin story, the threat she represents to Zeus, and all that kind of good stuff. I mean, if you like Greek mythology, you know, Athena's a good get. So we need to figure out where we're going to put that temple. I kind of feel like it needs to be a little bit higher up, definitely higher up than this one. Maybe, maybe on like a ledge right here. You know what I mean? I don't know. Or maybe we build out a ledge. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to study the Acropolis and kind of figure out what I want to do there. But I think it'd be, I think it'd be pretty great. But all things considered, that is gonna do it for us for today. I hope you are doing well. And for those of you who have been enjoying the FanCraft over this past year, thank you so much for tuning in. You know what a labor of love this series is, and hopefully you've been able to enjoy some of our creative builds, and kind of some of our, our fun antics as a group. There's more to show off in the future, more to build in the future, and more fun to have. So stay tuned. We look forward for what's to come. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>